Welcome friends as we gather on this four, fifth Sunday in our Lenten journey beholding the cross and we are always continually thankful for the privilege to worship together as one body in Christ and we just pray that this would be a service that may bless you for the coming days and just a little bit about our life and ministry before we begin uh, my contact information is in the order of service and uh, today, just wanted to acknowledge that we're lifting up our worship today in loving memory of Ernie Lockyer. Ernie was a valued member of our church community, and we remember his life and the way that he has served his church and touched our lives today, and is remembered by Maxine, his wife Maxine, and family. And we have many prayers also that we are lifting up today. Um, we have uh, many in our midst who are going through challenges. And as we always say, we don't need to name them, but God knows and hears our prayers and will answer them according to God's will. And just one uh, note that we have, Whitburn Area and Ministerial are having their uh, ecumenical service during Holy Week. So we invite you to come uh, and share in worship there. And that's at Faith United Church in Greens Harbor at 7 o'clock. March 26th, Holy Tuesday. So we invite you to be present for that, and I'm sure it will be an uplifting time as we journey through towards Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And also take note of our worship schedule that's on, that's within our order of service today. And with that, there's no other uh, announcements to make. Let us join Yvonne as we sing our intro, Teach Me Thy Way, O Lord. Teach me thy way, thy guiding grace afford, teach me thy way. Teach me thy way, O Lord, teach me thy way. I must face, teach me thy way. When darkness fills my life, teach me thy way. In failure or success, show me how I am blessed. May I your love confess, teach me thy way. And as always in our worship, we acknowledge the presence of Christ in our life as we light our Christ candle. And it's a light that we we're called to, to share with others, not only on our Lenten journey, but throughout all times. And for that we say, thanks be to God. Please join me in our call to worship. The time has come again to return to behold a cross. Returning to our God, who through Christ calls us to open our eyes to ways of comfort amid suffering. Now is the time of turning away, turning away from our troubles and looking to the endurance of Christ on the cross. Now is the time of lifting our eyes to the Christ, to focus on Him, for where our faith is, our strength and comfort will be also. Now is the time for renewing, to be transformed in mind and heart as we behold the cross of Christ. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we gather here today on this fifth Sunday of our Lenten journey to behold the wonders of the cross and all you have done for us. Loving God, your Son, Jesus, suffered great affliction at the hands of his tormentors. 
yet faced it with confidence in you. Use our Lenten worship time to strengthen us when we face hardship so we may continue with the same confidence to love and serve you. Transform us by your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now let us join with Yvonne as we sing together our opening hymn, Sing Your Praise to God Eternal. Sing your praise to God Eternal. Sing your praise to God the Son. Sing your praise to God the Spirit, living and forever one. God has made us God, has blessed us God, has called us to be true. And friends, as much as we strive to journey closer to Christ during our Lenten worship or any time of year, we know that we always will fall short of God's expectations for us and God's plan for our lives. And it's always in that spirit we pray our prayer of confession. Let us pray it together. Merciful God, as the days draw near for your Son, Jesus Christ, to go to Jerusalem, we behold how Jesus showed us love and compassion beyond measure as he endured suffering for our sake on that cross. We come seeking forgiveness for the times we have not turned to you when we face struggles, thinking we can do it on our own. Let us take a moment in silent prayer. And continuing together, help us not forget how we are called to trust you in all circumstances. Reconcile us to you, O God, through your Son, so we may reach our common goal of living abundantly in unity with you. In your name we make this prayer. Amen. And friends, there's always an assurance of pardon. Jesus faced suffering on the cross so we may live abundantly in this life and life to come. Thank you, Jesus, for the comfort and forgiveness you bring 
offering us the compassionate vision of God's love. Happy Kids TV the Holy Tales Holy, tell me something. We always talk about faith, but what is it exactly? Um, well, when we say we have faith, we mean that we believe that something is true even if we cannot see it with our eyes. Huh? I am confused. All right, come. Let me tell you a story which might help you to understand better. Long time ago, there was a little girl named Mila. One day, she went to a farm with her father and got lost in the woods on the farm. But Mila was not afraid. She sat down on her knees folded her hands and she started praying. Suddenly, she saw a friendly man coming towards her. He was the farmer who owned the land. He found the little girl sitting and praying. He came over to her and said, My child, are you lost? Yes. The farmer was very shocked to see Mila not scared at all, even though she was lost in the woods. But aren't you scared? No, sir. I knew you would come. I was, in fact, waiting for you. The farmer was surprised. How did this little girl know he would come and help her go back home? Waiting for me? What made you think I was coming? I was praying that you would. You were praying? But all I heard you saying was the 26 alphabets. What was that for? Mila looked up at him and said, I was not sure exactly what to say. So I was praying all the letters of the alphabet and letting God put them together the way he wanted them. He knew and understood that I was lost and I needed help. So he put the letters together better than I could do. The farmer was amazed to see the amount of faith this little girl had in God. Even though she couldn't see God, she had faith that he loved her and truly cared for her. She knew God would help her. So, when we have faith in God, it isn't about how big or small our faith is. It is all about how powerful our God is and that nothing is impossible for God. Did this help you children understand the meaning of faith better? Yes, it did. It's like we have faith in you that you will tell us a story every time we visit you. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> well, it's something like that. Hope you enjoyed the story, children. Oh yes, it was amazing. Thank you, Holy, for explaining to us the meaning of faith. I am glad you enjoyed the story. Until next time, bye-bye. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep. He's got the And before I ask our readers to come and share scriptures today with us, let us seek God's blessing. Loving God, we come once again to hear your word, to be inspired, to live 
as compassionate, caring, and loving individuals as you did, even amid our suffering. Speak to us, Lord, through your word, and help us to live by the truth we hear today. In your name we pray. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the Apostle Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 24 to 28, and chapter 12, verse 10. Five times I have received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked. For a night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers and sisters, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, hungry and thirsty, often without food, cold and naked. And besides other things, I am under daily pressure because of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak? And am I not weak? Who is made to stumble? And am I not indignant? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God, the Father of the Lord Jesus, blessed be forever, knows that I do not lie. Therefore, I... I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whatever I am weak, then I am strong. The word from our sacred scriptures today. Thanks be to God. Our responsive reading is taken from Voices United 744, Psalm 22. Let us share responsively. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the cry of my distress? O oh my God, I cry out in the daytime, but you do not answer. At night also, but I get no relief. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. In our ancestors trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. They called to you, and you res rescued them. In you they put their trust, and you did not disappoint them. But I am a worm, less than a human, an object of diversion, an outcast of the people. All those who see me laugh, laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and toss their heads, saying, You trusted in God for deliverance. If God cares for you, let God rescue you. But you are the one who took me out of the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you have I depended sent from my birth, even from my mother's womb. You have been my God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Do not be far from me, for trouble is close at hand, and there is no one to help me. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravenous roaring lion. My life pours out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart has melted like wax within my breast. My mouth is parched as dry as clay. My tongue clings to my palate. I do lie in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. The wicked hem me in on every side. They bind my hands and my feet. I can count on my bones while, while they stand staring, gloating over me. They divide my garments among themselves. They cast lots for my clothing. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Gospel reading for today is taken from Matthew, reading chapter 27, verses 27 to 31, reading from the Newly Revised Standard Version. The Soldiers Mocked Jesus Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. 
they put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. The Gospel of Christ according to Matthew. Thanks be to God. Thank you once again to our readers for sharing with us this day. And before we seek God's word through our meditation, let us pray. Loving God, as we once again break open your scriptures and try to seek your wisdom from them, we ask that you would bless the hearing and understanding of those gathered today and bless the words of my lips and the meditation of each heart that it may be acceptable in your sight and of benefit to us. In your name we pray. Amen. Those scriptural images which were just shared in our series this Sunday speak to us of suffering and what Christ endured for our sakes and are very painful for us as Christians to hear if we really take them in. And we, today we're going to look at suffering and how it affects our life. And how do we react when others cause us to suffer? Or when someone close to you wounds your emotions? Or how do you deal with a friend who betrays you? Or we know that suffering is very real, especially when we lose someone close to us. And how do we justify our behavior and the way with, with the facts and the figures? And how do we make sense and scream sometimes in grief and wonder. And what do we do? Our sacred text today offers us some advice for that. And the Bible in Romans 8, if we had heard that today, said, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Mm. Now what does that mean? Well, I guess if we heard correctly, it doesn't say that you're wrong if you get angry. And you may be right getting emotional because we have been wronged and cheated. But scripture tells us, if we want to truly face our suffering, we are to follow the example of Jesus Christ when he faced suffering on the cross. We are to walk in the spirit. And today for a little while, I want to revisit a few thoughts on what Christ went through and what his death accomplished and see how that may help us face our trials and tribulations, which cause us to suffer. John 16, 3, 33, I'm sorry, assures us that in this world we'll have our troubles. But Jesus said, take heart, I have overcome the world. And as I said a moment ago, we will suffer. Being a Christian does not sugarcoat our suffering. And we're told quite clearly that we'll have crosses to bear. We will be persecuted or mocked because of our stand sometimes, because we are Christians. And when I first decided to enter studies in the ministry, a couple of my acquaintances actually said to me, oh, she's going to be a goody-goody now. And now some of them, of course, they're not as close a friend as they once were. And yes, I know that we will all have our hardships and pain. And we'll be sad and lonely, especially at times when we've lost loved ones and we'll suffer tremendously. But having faith in Jesus doesn't mean we'll never suffer. And neither is it being a Christian going to be helping us take the easy way out. It's going to be rough. And then when we look at scripture, we hear what the Apostle Paul endured. You just heard it. And the verse from Matthew's gospel portrays Christ's suffering. And then I think, well, why not me when I look at what Christ endured on that cross? He was not even exempt from suffering. He struggled with God's plan for him in the Garden of Gethsemane. And scripture tells us that his sweat became like drops of blood. He was arrested. He was abandoned by his closest companions, his disciples who journeyed with him. And last week we heard that the only disciple there was the beloved one whom he entrusted his mother to. That was the only one who was at the foot of the cross. 
And we know when he was beaten, he was accused of being a blasphemer. He was flogged. He was forced to wear a crown of thorns that was put upon his head and a purple robe on his scarred back. And worst of all, he endured the agony on that cross until he breathed his last breath. And the familiar reference from Isaiah 53, 3 tells us Christ was the suffering servant. He was despised and rejected by many, we're told. He was a man of sorrow, familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. You know, when we really take it all in, it's difficult for us to face the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that it was all for our sake. And yes, it is even hard for us to face suffering in our own lives. So we look to Paul in our scriptures that we just heard today of how to face suffering in our human journey. Because as followers in Jesus Christ, Paul tells us what he went through. Five times he received at the hands of the Jewish 40 lashes, less one. Three times he was beaten with rods, he was stoned, he was shipwrecked. And he said that he was in danger from rivers, robbers, dangers even of his own people. He spent many a sleepless night in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and, and exposed. And apart from other things, there was the daily pressure of him and the anxiety he had for overseeing all the churches that involved in the ministry of Christ. Wow, talk about suffering in a human life. Paul had it in spades, didn't he? And despite all he encountered, he still was able to say by the Holy Spirit, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And that came from Romans 8, 18. And he said to the church of the people at Corinth, for the sake of Christ, then I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecution, and, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Sufferings for Paul drew him closer to God and Christ, made him bolder to serve. And he says this remarkable statement in chapter 5 of Romans 3 to 5. He says, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Then how should you and I face suffering? What can we learn from Paul? And from the example that we, we are faced with every Easter or every Lenten journey, one thing is clear, that we should not wallow in our sufferings or consider ourselves somehow cursed or doomed when things happen to us. Paul tells us that we are to look at our sufferings as something that Christ will give us more hope when we journey through them. It will help us be more mature in our beliefs. It will deepen our faith. And most of all, it will draw us closer to God and others. For me personally, I would say, in the midst of times that I have suffered, I have found myself praying more, reading scriptures more, perhaps thinking more about my spiritual journey in relation to the world. And I personally know that through suffering, I came to understand a long time ago that I'm not in control of my life as I thought I was and that I must rely on God and others more than I thought I needed to. I've also discovered that suffering has made me more sympathetic to the plights of others in similar situations. It has made me more compassionate and more understanding as I journey in ministry and even before ministry with others. And because of that, I have a newfound purpose. 
of being a beacon of hope to those who are facing suffering and feeling hopeless. And because I am, have endured these times where I suffered and I grieved from the death, the loss of others, loss of my mother, my father, my brother, and also having cancer, I now authentically can help others journey through their suffering, as difficult as it is, and let them know it's not the end. And I think, too, we know that more and more in our society, Christians are becoming more and more pushed to the side and being mocked and ridiculed. But we also know the example of Christ on the cross. When he was hanging on that cross, he looked down upon those who had brought this, this destiny upon him, and he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And when he looked with love on John, he and his mother, he told them to be there for one another. So I guess our challenge when we are suffering is not only to look inward, and we need to deal with, with our inward feeling, but to look outward with a focus to someone that God has put in our path. When we look beyond our own personal selves, sometimes our suffering can take a back seat perhaps and we have a better, better view of the picture that God's grand design has for us as people. I'd like to end the message with a story. I once read of a lady who grieved herself into 20, to a 20 year depression where she had had cancer and she finally went to a psychiatrist to ask for help and the psychiatrist after seeing her so many times, said to her, I want you to go out and find someone who has never had an experience of suffering and then come back and tell me about them. So she agreed. She would do that for a couple of months. So she went door to door and after sitting, first family she came across, I think it was the home of a wealthy family, and she thought, well, they have money, so they can't be suffering. They could never have endured suffering because of their wealth. So after sitting and chatting and having tea, she found that they had experienced great suffering with the loss of a child. Then she went to another home, that of a doctor, same thing. She said, he's a doctor. He understands all kinds of medical stuff. He can't ever have had suffering. So she went in there. And even the doctor had endured suffering and because of it chose medicine. And next she went to a humble cottage of a sweet elderly lady who welcomed her to tea. And they chatted and realized, she realized that this elderly lady had lost her husband and was now living alone for months and months. So up to this point, she had found nobody who had not endured suffering. So she continued her search and continued her search and a year later she bumped into her doctor at the supermarket and he asked her, how come you didn't return after four months when I asked you? She said, I was too busy helping out new friends that I had found and I didn't have time to come and see you. Her suffering became focused outward on helping others who had experienced similar challenges, and it lightened her own load and changed her perspective. I was watching a Christian, Christian program this past week, and I heard this profound statement, and I'd like to end with this. It says, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change for you. I want to say that again. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change for you. Friends, we have confidence. The confidence when we have that in our Christ, that his victory over death means suffering. Yes, we will endure it as Christ did, but it will cease and we will be blessed to be in the presence of Christ forever and ever. And what else can we say but go forth and live your life trusting in God through the good and the bad. Amen.
And now let us sing the hymn, Your Hands, O Christ, in days of old, were strong to heal and save. Let us join Yvonne as we sing that together. Let us now prepare our hearts for prayer as we sing, Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, as we gather as your people on this fifth Sunday of our Lenten journey, as we behold the suffering of your Son, Jesus Christ, let us never take the suffering that took place there lightly, but honor and respect and revere it for what it was, a path to our eternal life with you. Let us never discount how you endured suffering to help make our lives better. We are eternally, eternally grateful to you for your ultimate sacrifice for us. And loving God, as we endure suffering on this earth, suffering of body, mind, and spirit, help us to turn to you for strength and remember that even your suffering, even in your suffering, you continued to do 
God's will and obey God's commands for your life. Empower us to follow your example that we might reach the goals that you have in mind for us. Comforting God, we also come knowing that you are compassionate towards others who were suffering, even when you yourself were suffering so deeply. Help us to be supportive to those we know who are suffering around us, and let not our own troubles stop us from being in service to those in need. And we lift unto you all those who are facing challenges, challenges of grief and loss, challenges due to illness, challenges that many are facing today throughout this world with war and violence and hostility. May, O oh God, they look to you as a beacon of hope. Loving God, we also know that in your great anguish you cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You felt the suffering, but yet in the end you humbly said to God, Into your hands I commend my spirit. Carry us through times when we are feeling forsaken by God because of our suffering and move us to a place of peace, knowing that you, O oh God, have us in the palm of your hand. Holy God, we pray that we would see past the struggles of this life to the joy that is set before us. May our momentary trials lead us to the revelation of your plan for an abundant life. For these and all things that we have upon our hearts this day, we ask for your grace, confident that we may face whatever comes our way because you face the cross. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we offer this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, when we speak of suffering, we know it's very real in our world today. And we are called as people of God, as we said in our message, to look outward and when we look outward and help others, we know that our lives become better because of it. And in the United Church of Canada, we do that through our mission and service. So let's take a moment and see how we as God's people help alleviate the suffering of others throughout this world. And after that, following that, we will share together our offertory hymn and then our offertory prayer. Hard work doesn't always pay off. Around the world, many people work hard and still can't feed their families. Your gifts through mission and service turn hard work into true hope for the future. Thanks to your support, resourceful people like Margaret Kagundu have the opportunity not just to survive, but to thrive. Margaret and her children live in Nyeri, Kenya. In some parts of Kenya, people live in inadequate housing, without running water, and with very little access to health care. Margaret struggled to meet her family's basic needs before she received a microloan from a lending program supported through your gifts to mission and service called Jami Imara, meaning a strong community. 2004 is when I joined this project. I was given the first loan. I had saved and I was given a loan of 2,000 shillings. I benefited a lot from that 2,000 shillings. I started a small business of selling vegetables. I was granted 10,000 shillings four times. Having been given the 10,000 shillings four times, I cleared and went on to get 20,000 shillings until I built these houses. I built these two houses for renting out. I have even started keeping goats that reproduce. I have educated my children. There is even one who has started Form 1. I sold the goats that I had and took him to Form 1. He is now in high school. Supporting women like Margaret, who are determined to change their lives, is just one of the ways that you are helping turn hard work into hope 
every day. There are many women who want to join the group because they see that I have progressed a lot. I am no longer the way I was before. Thank you for your generosity to the mission and service of the United Church of Canada. Please make a gift today. Let us pray a prayer over the gifts that have been received and will be received. Loving God, you have called us together as community to do your will, to reach out and help relieve suffering and to journey with others so your gospel message of love may be known. Bless these gifts and their givers to fulfill your will and find ways to bring more people to faith in you. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. And our closing hymn this evening, or this morning, or this afternoon, whenever you are gathering to worship with us, offers the same message that we had in our meditation. Simply trusting every day, trusting through the stormy way, even when my faith is small, Trusting Jesus, that is all. So let us join together with Yvonne as we sing our closing hymn.
And before I share our commissioning, I want to thank those who helped make this worship possible. Of course, always our, our musician, Yvonne uh, Millie, and our technical crew, Erwin and Betty, and also to you for joining us this day, but mostly to God, who understands the journey that we go through in life, and even when our faith is small, and even sometimes when we find difficulty in trusting, will always continue to be there for us. So, please join me in our commissioning. We journey on, knowing that Christ's word will give us confidence to face whatever comes our way, because Jesus endured the cross for our sakes. As we journey through the coming week, we go, continuing to trust in Christ's promises. And friends, go now in peace, and may the unimaginable love of God, the amazing grace of Christ, and the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. God bless you, and have a wonderful week as we look forward next Sunday to Palm Sunday.